Oh, happy Wednesday. Hope that you're doing well. Um, it's already been an interesting start to our week, man. Um, I hope that you will join with us, really churches, Christians around the world, as we pray for the re Ukrainian people, um, the, the images and the things in which we are seeing um, on our, our newscast, in the papers, articles that we read, um, that maybe come across to newsletters that we subscribe to are just absolutely heartbreaking. One of the great things about being a part of the Southern Baptist um, Convention is we are already doing things to help those who are in crisis. We, we do this all the time. We have a special group of people called Send Relief. They are made up of volunteers of the Southern Baptist Convention um, here in North America, as well as volunteers, other Christians, Southern Baptists around the world who will combine their resources, combine their talents, their training, um, their expertise, and they go to places that are in turmoil with, all around the world, those who have been devastated by storms, those who have been devastated by wars, um, etc., and they go in and they provide the help that is needed. So already this um, International Mission Board working with the Southern Baptist Convention are already discussing ways in which we can reach out to those who are hurting in the re Ukraine. The most important and most powerful thing that we can do, other than sending our resources, but we start here first, step one, is we get on our face before God and we cry out for a people group. The crimes that are taking place against the people in Ukraine are um, unthinkable. And um, a, a lot of things that have been going on for years are coming to light. So we, as the people of God, we must always take a stand against tyranny, against crimes, against people. Doesn't matter what they look like. Doesn't mean uh, matter whether they look like us or not, whether they believe like us or not. We have responsibility as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We'll be talking more about that this Sunday to share the love and the grace of Christ to minister to those who are in need. Quite literally, we are to be the hands, the feet, the voice of Jesus um, all the time, but especially to those who are in time of need. As we read through the Gospels of, of Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, so we read about his life. Jesus never asked to see someone's report card or resume or, spread, or spreadsheet or, you know, your rap sheet or anything like that before he was willing to extend a helping hand, a healing hand, a providing hand, sheltering hand to someone who is in need. And, and oftentimes, I think maybe we would like to place our own stipulations on certain people, certain things. We want them to be worthy, whatever. We forget that without Jesus Christ, all of us are unworthy. We are, we've been made worthy by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been welcomed into the presence of God, which kind of takes us where we're going tonight in Psalms chapter 110. But I do urge you, um, please be in prayer. Um, here at the church, we have a list of 10 things in which we would urge you to pray daily about um, those uh, needs in the Ukraine, how we can be of prayer support to them. And I will remind you that you can always give um, to send relief through give your giving um, to Farley Community Church, whether you give electronically or you give, you know, paper gifts, uh, checks, whatever, you can always designate a portion of that to go towards send relief. And and the great thing about that, whenever you do that, 100% of that money goes directly um, to where you want it to go. So if you say, I want this portion of my money to go to send relief, 100% of that goes directly to help those people who are in harm's way. Psalms 110. This is a Psalm of David, more than just a song. This is a messianic song. So because of the faith and the understanding that David had in the writings of Moses, David has a forward thinking mind. He, he looks back at the past. He studies the writings of Moses. He has an understanding that, that God is pointing Moses towards a future where we have a redeemer, where we have a savior, where we have a a, a Messiah, a conquering king. We have, um, we have an intercessor, one who stands before God in our behalf. And so David had that kind of faith. And so 
under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he pens this psalm. And again, this song is a messianic song. This is song is not speaking about David himself, but this is a song in which David is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want you to understand the blessing. We're going to go a lot deeper in this in my in-person class tonight. And um, if you have questions, send me an email, mike at farleycc.org. I'll just kind of send you a brief outline as to what we talked about um, in our Bible study, in-person Bible study tonight. But let me read this to you. Uh, the Lord said to my Lord, and this is an interesting phrase. So God the Father said to Adonai, that's the actual Hebrew translation, Jehovah said to Adonai. So God is going to have a conversation with the Lord Jesus, okay? So the Lord said to my Lord, set at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now, this is still an event that has not yet happened. So this is something that's talking about the return in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. You read about that. And Daniel also read about that in the book of Revelation. The Lord shall send the rod, your strength, out of Zion and rule in the midst of your enemies. Again, verse number one and two, future event still has not happened yet in our world, but we have a promise, Old Testament promise, New Testament promise by the Lord Jesus that this will happen. Verse number three, speaking of us, your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power in the beauty of holiness from the wound of the morning. You have the dew of your, your youth. Um, we will be volunteers. Paul refers to us as bond servants. We were once enslaved to sin. We have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ, but we're not slaves to Jesus. We're bond servants. We have a relational um, contract with our Savior. We serve him not because he owns us. We serve him because we choose to. We serve to because we love him. So there's this relational bond that we have with the Lord Jesus. And so we volunteer to be his representatives, to be his servants, um, to be, once again, the hands and the feet of Jesus. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Boy, that's a hard word to say. Melchizedek. There we go. Say it slow or say it really fast. Nobody will ever know the difference. All right, so the Lord has sworn and will relent, again, verse number four, and will not relent. You are priests forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And we're going to talk more about that tonight. We're going to explore that from the book of Genesis, I think, around chapter 14. Um, also, um, Hebrews chapter 5 and chapter 7. So we'll look at some passage about that. You have a high priest right now. His name is Jesus. He stands at the right hand of the Father, intercessing for you. He is your high priest. Um, the Lord is at your right hand. Verse number five. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. Again, speaking of a future event when God will return to make all things right here on earth. Then verse number seven. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head, and the head is Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus Christ will be exalted above all nations. He'll be exalted above all kings. He'll be exalted among all the peoples of the earth. And on that day, Jesus Christ will take his rightful place on the throne of the world. And we, as followers of Jesus, as Christians, we will rule and reign with him. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful messianic psalm. And my prayer is, is that these verses from Psalms 110 will give you hope. Again, we're surrounded by a lot of crazy things that are going on. We're surrounded by a lot of darkness, a lot of things going on in our world we just don't understand. Um, there are a lot of scary things. And they're scary if you don't know what this book says. And they're scary if you don't know the plan of the Lord. And if you don't know your part in his plan... Um, we forget that we are just pilgrims here on this earth. Um, our dash between our arrival day and our departure date is pretty, pretty short. Now, what you put in that dash is mighty important. But we forget that after the date of departure comes eternity. 
first question is, is where are you going to spend eternity? Are you going to spend it with the Lord Jesus Christ by your faith and the forgiveness of his sins offered to you on the cross of Jesus, his glorious resurrection from the dead? Or are you going to choose to trust in yourself, trust in the ways of men, and spend eternity apart from him in a place in which the Bible refers to as hell? And you read the description of hell in Scripture, and it's not a place that I would like to go. And it's not a place that I want you to go. So the first and ultimate decision you have to make is what are you going to do with Jesus? And once you've established that, then you need to understand what you have in Jesus. And what you have is you have victory. No matter how bad things get here or how bad things look here, you have a God who is still in control. And we have a God who one day, whether he returns for me personally to take me home to be with him, my eyes will close in death and I will open my eyes in his presence and glory, or he comes for us corporately. He rescues his church from the world, and then one day we return to rule and reign with him. So you need to know him, and you need to understand who you are in him and the victory that he has. It's all recorded right here in Scripture. And um, this is just one tiny portion that reminds us of the victory that we have in Christ. Father, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the encouragement that we receive from it. God, I pray that we would meditate upon the verses that we just read from Psalms 110. Give us a greater understanding, Lord, as we stand in person tonight. And as we explore these things, Lord, I, I come not as a teacher, but I come as a student. Lord, wanting to understand more about what your word has to say. Wanting to understand more about who you are and what you desire to do in our world. And Lord, understand more what you're going to do in the world that's to come. Lord, thank you so much. I pray for those who are in need in our church family, in our community, and around our world. God, we pray for those in Ukraine. God, we pray that you would have put an end to that war very, very soon. Put an end to the destruction of innocent life. And Lord, I pray that you will change the hearts of leaders around our world. Lord, that they would lead like you lead, that they would re lead righteously and justly, that they would lead in a way that seeks to preserve life and equality and freedom. Oh God, move in our world in an incredible way. God, again, thank you so much for speaking to our hearts. Lord, we love you. And we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we say in his name, amen and amen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you soon.